Cool. Hi, um, I'm Ottilie, Chair of the Creative Group and Creative Director of The Romans. Um, so the title of this talk is slightly misleading um, in that it is the rise of the junior creative, but actually we're going to be talking about the rise of all kinds of creative roles. Um, so historically in PR, you've always had a load of generalists. And then you've got a creative director at the top who's sort of dispensing ideas um, to all the different account teams. And then potentially because of the change in the media landscape and it's been harder to get coverage and there's been a need to be more creative, we've seen people sort of move over and really start to specialise. So actually four of us on this call have had to really fight to get that role because you sort of have to pitch why you've got the right skill set, but also that an agency has a need for a full-time creative. But what that has done is sort of thrown open the doors for younger talent to come through and they can actually see a progression for themselves so that they can actually, you know, end up being a creative director as well, which is really, really new. And what the sort of downfall of it is, is that we're still in its infancy. So there's no standardization um, across salaries, across job roles. It's all a bit of a model. So this talk really is about just standing back for a second and saying what what does this mean? What does the rise of a junior creative talent mean for the structure of agencies, for creative output, um, for how we behave, for how we nurture talent, how we attract talent, et cetera, et cetera. There's so many different questions, which is why we've got a whole hour to talk about this. So we will kick off um, and I will grill the panel, but then feel free to put questions in the chat box and we'll get to them at the end. Um, I think that's everything from me. I, I can see the chat live. So also if we're talking about something that you're particularly interested in, drop it in and we will try and answer a few. So over to the panel to introduce themselves. So Amy coming to you first. Hi, um, I'm Amy and I'm a Associate Creative Director at Hope and Glory, where I've been for about four and a half years. Um, and I took the traditional route, I suppose, in that I worked in PR on accounts for years and years and years, and then did slightly more and more creative until I managed to persuade my way into a creative title, onto a creative team. Um, so yeah, similar to you, I think. Yeah, I, I was exactly the same. I was an account director um, and then persuaded my boss to move me into a creative role. But that was after being an agency where I asked to be a creative and then they answered that request by just sticking me on the creative table and hoping that I would just learn the role through osmosis, <laughs> um, which did not happen, crashed and burned out of that agency. Um, but Fadi, you next? Yeah, hi, I'm uh, Fadi. I'm creative strategist at uh, Hill and Knowlton uh, in London. I sit on the agency's creative leadership team uh, in London, which is something we call the Innovation and Creative Hub. Uh, it's split into kind of nine sectors and the sort of this team works across all of them, um, retained on like some big accounts and dive in and out of um, lots of others. I bring uh, the creative strategy firepower when that's needed, but also do a lot of um, PR, the line of blurry, right? Do everything from setting the direction to creative work to actually doing the creative work myself. So it's a pretty all encompassing role and I love it. Jamie? Hello, everyone. Um, so I'm a CD at an agency called Karmarama, which is an integrated agency. So we do PR, social, um, advertising is a big thing, and UX, loads of different stuff. Um, I have a quite an interesting role because I sit in what I think is called the grey area. So I oversee all the PR and social creative work, but I also have a foot in the wider creative agency in the creative department. Um, so kind of basically look after the earned media, but also um, how they can turn advertising with an earned spin as well. So it's an, it's an interesting space to be a creative. Um, but before that, I was at an agency called John Doe, where I had a made up title of creative associate uh, for a year and a half. Um, but before that, like Ots, I was an account director who was banging down the door to get creative fit in my title. And Daisy? Hey, yeah, um, I'm Daisy. I'm a junior creative at Freud's. I work in the distillery, which is our creative and strategy department. And my background is mainly in design. So these days I'm kind of 50% design, 50% creative. And then Megan. Hi, so I'm kind of the odd one out here, like I'm not a creative, I actually run a recruitment agency for the PR and communications industry. Um, so we cover kind of PR, social, digital, creatives, obviously, um, and marketing both in-house and agency. Cool. Thank you for joining me on this 
bit of a journey through what the hell we're doing in terms of building a creative progression plan. Um, so if we're talking about barriers and how we got here, what did you have to overcome? So when you were first pitching to your bosses that you should be a full-time creative and that they needed one, what were the sort of setbacks and how did you make a case for yourself, Amy? Yeah, it's a, it's a tricky one because I think um, it's something that I'd battled with at a few different agencies before I got to Hope and Glory. Um, and it was something that the others, I always went for small agencies deliberately. And obviously it's a massive investment for a small agency and it just isn't something that exists within those kind of agencies. Um, and then I went to an agency like Premier that does have a lot of creative directors, but they're not really, they're not the same as in a kind of, in a PR agency, I suppose like Hope and Glory is. They don't do the same kind of job. They're not coming up with PR ideas as such. So it's always been a bit of a strange place for me to try and edge into that role where it didn't really exist as I wanted to do it already, I suppose. Um, Hope and Glory was different. I knew that they were, you know, they were known for having a lot of good ideas and that that's, that's the kind of nature of their agency. That's what they built themselves on. And also everyone gets involved in creative. So I was really attracted to that. Um, but I suppose the other side of that is because everyone gets involved in creative, if you have to really make a point for why your role should be different or why your title should be different. Um, and I think when I arrived, they had a relatively, the structure that it has been previously, I think in PR, in a medium sized agency perhaps, where you have one creative director um, and that person does creative and then everyone chips in, but there isn't really a role for anyone else. So you're asking a lot of an agency to, to create that for you. Um, and I think it's a good time for us to be talking about it because building more of a structure and having different levels in creative is a relatively new thing. And it's something that's growing, um, which I see as a really, really positive thing. So yeah, the barriers to me, I suppose it was just trying to trying to convince that there are specific skills you have when you know there are skills that a lot of people in the agency have and that we all contribute anyway. So why do you need a title or why do you need? So my job was, I suppose, Firstly, I saw your title happen, utterly, and that was a great idea. I thought, great, I can have that one. That's a, that's a title I can use. Um, that wasn't, you know, I knew I wasn't at creative director level yet. So it was just a way for me to show that that didn't matter and I could have a title that would be, you know, leading towards that. Um, and then I suppose it was just about finding the skills that I had that were different than the skills that the current creative director already had. Um, I'm a lot less experienced, so I needed to show that there were other things that I would bring, which is what I spent a lot of time doing. Um, and thankfully, they agreed with me and did, you know, create create a team based on some of the information I was giving. And there was another a guy who's our creative now who was also doing the same thing. So I think we were able to show that we'd all bring something extremely different to the table. And as a team, um, that's why I think we work well because we are. Mm. Yeah, I think proving that it's a billable role is one of the biggest obstructions because obviously if you've got a whole team that are generalists that are coming up doing brainstorms and coming up with creative to and really say, good ideas already yeah you know it, it's not like there's a gap we're not doing well enough you need someone to do this you're trying to say we're doing really well we could also do even better if you like <laughs> you know so it's yeah be ambitious yeah um Fadi, how did you find it sort of breaking out of your accounts role yeah, you know, I I had to break into agencies full stop. Like I couldn't find any agencies who would have me after I graduated. I don't know if I'm going sort of too far back here, but like I took such a long way in. I studied um, media and comms at uni, and I fancied myself in a creative agency. And I graduated sort of in 2010, around the time the world was kind of burning with the financial crash. Well, that's, that's, that's an excuse. Look, that's an excuse. I just wasn't paying attention. I spent three years at uni, not really studying, not really thinking about what I was going to do after. I picked the course because it sounded easy and because it sounded creative and I fancied myself as one of those. But what happened next is all the talented people I graduated with got into agencies and I was kind of floundering around on the dole, not really knowing what to do next. So I took the first job that came along which was at a pharmaceutical company in Burson on Trent which is so glam and it obviously wasn't what I wanted to do but it got me off the dole and I still had that sort of objective in mind and my whole career has just been kind of a series of sideways shuffles where like you take the inch that someone is willing to give you to do the thing you want to do and you run with it show them you can do it well 
and then sort of show someone else that you did it so like I went from that role into you know I, I got really sort of good at that role at sort of meeting clients and going out and sort of holding the relationships and then I speak Arabic I, I was going out to the Middle East a lot and I, I just met um, some folk who are running an environmental research program out there um, uh, sounds really random but they needed someone to come in and do communications and I studied that and I wasn't really doing it in my farmer role but I said I can do that and I can do this relationship part so I can I can deliver on this kind of thing you need but let me do farms and then when I got back to the UK after sort of being on that for a year and a half I joined another sustainability development thing called Gravity Light and I was doing pure e-coms and I was managing the agencies for them and you know I really took control of the agencies and the work we did one at can and so then from that point on agencies were knocking on the door but even then they were just kind of saying you're the comms guy not the creative guy the comms guy and so like another sideways shuffle into a design agency called pentagram um which some people who are into design might have heard of a big agency but they just wanted me for comms but again it was like oh, i can do this other stuff too and that's kind of how i moved into strategy and from strategy into creative and the rest is the rest. And it's just taking like those little inches that people are willing to give you and running with them, but not neglecting the day job because then mm. they're off. And so that's kind of how I did it. Just um, yeah. I think sometimes you do just have to do a dual role for a while and prove that you can do the creative side whilst you still, you know, keep doing the accounting side for the clients. Um, Jamie, you were same level as me when you switched over. It's quite difficult when you get more senior, isn't it? To sort of, sort of make a case for yourself because you're so valuable to the agency as an account director. Yeah. How do you switch? It's kind of like, I'm going to echo everything that you guys have already said. It's, I think one of my, one of my major like bugbears with the PR industry and how it's perceived, right? Is that everyone does everything. Mm. And you've got to be like a jack of all trades. And that's like cool because it means you're tooled up with how to speak to a journal, how to write a social code and calendar, how to client manage and, and all of that. But the idea that I think that it's kind of like everyone does creative is like, it's a bit old hat, I think. <laughs> and if you're the one that's coming up with all the, the ideas all the time, or at least kind of like the catalyst for the ideas or building them in really interesting ways, then it's kind of getting that point known. And that's kind of where I was at because kind of like coming up with an idea, getting the coverage on it, but going, that's great, but I want to be known for doing the ideas bit, not just getting the coverage bit. So by the time I was getting into AD level, it was a little bit kind of, a little bit kind of like sticking your heels in the ground and being like, I've, I've done this all the time now. I've done the dual role for six years. Let me just try this. I can still do the other bits as well as needed, but let me just try and focus on this and actually improve my career that way. Hmm. And I think, I think that's, that's a bit where it gets difficult. And that's kind of the hard conversations, right? Because it goes away from being like, well, what is the agency needed to kind of what you want? Yeah. Yeah. I suppose it's tricky because there, there is this whole tradition of people being generalists yeah. and you almost have to go against the whole setup of PR to say that you think that there should be specialists and some agencies just aren't quite ready to hear that. No, exactly. It's like, my, 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 like and I know people do love brainstorms. But I hate brainstorms I hate because, brainstorms. yeah, because you just feel like you're, you're, you're surrounded by everyone. No one really knows what to say sometimes. Everyone's scared of saying something. And it's like not productive to come up with a creative thought. I don't, I don't think. Some people love it, but not, not for mm. me. And it feels like that's kind of like the go-to to come up with ideas sometimes. Yeah. And that feels very, that feels quite old school to me. And I think that kind of change is needed. Yeah, I, I would completely agree with that. And I also think it's a timings thing. So if you have got a million clients to service, but then you're stuck in a room for half an hour with some Haribo sweets, are you going to come up with the best creative in the world? Probably not. Yeah. Whereas if you are a full-time creative with two days to work on something, you can probably think it through. 100%. Um, Daisy, coming in junior, did you sort of graduate and consider different marketing disciplines? Like, did you think about going into advertising? Like what? How did the lay of the land look to you as a brand new creative? Yeah, so I, I did theology at uni, um, which is obviously something I'm really pushing to use now. <laughs> but I kind of left uni and thought I really would like to work in something like advertising. I didn't really know or understand PR at that stage, if I'm honest. Um, and I kind of just took the first thing that sort of came my way. So I was like freelancing front of house, an AR and VR production company. 
Um, and they had a creative team there who were like mainly kind of like UX and UI designers, but they also were coming up with ideas for content. And I saw them and I thought, oh, I really want to be on that team. Um, and so kind of a little bit like Fadi, I did a series of sort of sidesteps and muscled my way in and like invited myself to brainstorms and stuff because I was in charge of the invites. So I just put myself on them. Um, and I kind of just did that until they accepted me as a junior creative. Um, and then I thought about it a bit more and I was like, this tech stuff isn't really up my alley. What else is out there? And then that's how um, I like first was introduced to Freud's. Yeah, that's interesting because I I thought after sort of five, six years of this role popping up, I thought it was sort of a rich breeding ground for juniors to come in and be like, oh my God, the opportunities are myriad. I can go anywhere that maybe that it's still a job to be done. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how it works for every agency, but um, my job title at Freud's was junior creative when I started, but I really was brought on to kind of help them with design. And when I was hired, it was sort of a discussion that I would take that step from design into creative, but probably still keep a bit of my like design capabilities. Hmm. And that's what's happened really. It's been a merging of the two, I think. Yeah, again, being made to sort of do that dual role while you prove yourself. Um, Megan, we, we've sort of talked about, oh, this role is so up and coming and we're seeing it across the board in lots of different levels. Is that being reflected in recruitment? Are you seeing people wanting to have a creative role at all levels? And are you seeing a need from agencies to have a full time creative? I think definitely there's a lot more demand than there was when I started seven years ago. I think seven years ago when I started, it was pretty much just one creative director token, normally a white male in an agency. Mm -hmm. That was pretty much it. Um, I think there's definitely been more demand from the junior levels over the last few years, but normally people that are already in PR roles then kind of wanting to make that switch across. But I think the agencies actually creating the roles has been a lot slower than the demand for candidates to move into it. Hmm. So still a fight to be done there. Um, let's just talk about job roles quickly, because I, I had a lot of fun LinkedIn stalking all of you. Um, so, Fadi, you are creative strategist, but then I noticed that in brackets, you've got associate director. So I feel like with a lot of creatives, you sort of struggle to, to show people where you sit in the pecking order, as well as having this creative title, because no one knows what any of it means. Yeah, hundred percent. And you know, when I first joined HK, there was so many conversations about: do we put that in the title, or do we just limit it to creative strategist? Because on the one hand, like it's a huge agency, I work across a lot of teams, and it's a very quick shorthand way to sort of say to people, "Don't push me around that much." Like I'm, I, I've, I've been around the block a little bit. Mm. But then when you sort of put it in in PR, we all know sort of the connotations that title holds. And then suddenly the kind of the creative part is more up for debate. So it kind of dilutes the purity of the other title. Um, so I kind of went for a no real solution type thing and put it in brackets. <laughs> so I don't know if that was the right thing to do or not. I love that. Hey, Jim. Um, yeah. Jamie, you were a creative associate. Can you tell us, I don't think there is an answer, how a creative associate differs from an associate creative? I haven't got the foggiest, mate. <laughs> like, the, the only reason we have, the only reason I came up with that title was because I wanted to move up from into the creative space from an AD. We had a creative director, so it would have been like a junior creative director role. But for some reason, we didn't go with junior creative director. It would have been an associate director role, so it was just a bit of a smush of two words. Like there was no, there was literal no thinking of, of it apart from that. And it's like, that sounds quite good. I'll put, I'll, I'll put that in my signature. And like, that was it. <laughs> yeah, it's, I think everybody's just sort of picking what they think sounds good. And I remember being made a senior creative and being quite upset because to me, an associate creative sounded more senior. Mm. But then my boss reminded me that in advertising, it's flipped the other way. So it's exactly that. So if you're looking, because now I've kind of, being in an advertising agency or part advertising agency for the last three years, kind of my eyes are open to the little bit how the advertising side of creative works. And you start off with like your creative level, which is then split into like junior, mid, senior. And mm. then you go into a creative director role. We, we don't have that structure. We don't have a structure. So it's kind of like you just have to make it up. Yeah, that's it feels it feels very much that we are all making it up at the yeah. moment, um, which I think would be great if, if there was clear steps for people yeah. like Daisy. So 
Daisy, do you have an idea in your head of where you want to get to? And do you think that you could sort of like plan out steps to get there? Or are you just a bit like, I'll do anything as long as there's a creative title that I can make up along the way? Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Uh, which probably, sure. probably says it all, doesn't it? Um, I, yeah, I don't feel as though there's that many clear steps in terms of, you know, what role you want to ultimately be in, or even if you wanted to be a creative director in the long term, what are the different rungs between that? I feel like every agency labels it differently. Mm. Um, and I think most of them are kind of basing it off what they see in ad agencies, but then it doesn't quite match up because it's sort of a more all encompassing role. Yeah. Um, so I'm not entirely sure. I think it's just time and experience really, isn't it? A, the yeah. more time you spend with a company getting to know the people, the more you can hopefully grow into it. Very wise. And Megan, is it hard to sort of place people into different roles because there's just nobody knows what one thing means to another agency? Yeah, in the short, um, it's a bit of a minefield because so I can talk to a junior creative that is very much entry level is on like 18K and I can talk to a junior creative that's maybe on 30K. There's And senior creative is even broader because it goes all the way kind of in equivalent agency titles probably from like am all the way up to kind of mid ad and then creative director again you've got people that are kind of senior ad's all the way up to kind of director level board level people so the brackets are huge um and also i would say even though we're having this discussion and there is a lot more demand there's still not that many agencies that have more than a couple of creatives in the team um there's really not so actually finding people um one thing that we find i'm sure we'll come on to this a bit later is that the pr agencies that are hiring within creatives want people that have been creatives but within a pr setting there's not many pr agencies that will look at creatives that have been in advertising agencies they want people with that pr creative experience mm -hmm. which is fine but it's a bit of a catch-22 because those roles don't exist um, and then they struggle to hire in them. So then they maybe don't end up hiring because they don't find the right person with the right level of experience. And it kind of goes from there. So it's good to see more junior people coming into it. Yeah. Could I, could I jump in on that as well really quickly? Mm, yeah. Because I think the, the interesting thing about Megan saying about like how even, how even then creative is described between the different like channels or, or like sectors or whatever. It's like, I remember going to an interview once and I was so buzzed because it was a creative director interview at a place I really wanted to get hired at. Um, and, the, and I was, the person I was getting interviewed um, asked me like, so are you more like a copy guy or an art direction guy? Mm. And I was like, neither. <laughs> like the, the PR space is completely different. It's just ideas, right? So even how, even how that corresponds is like another minefield yep. to kind of fill your way through. 100%. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree. I, I suppose traditionally when you had the, the model of the two creative directors or one creative director at the top, there was one design guy and one ideas guy. Um, and you're sort of still feeling like you have to fit that mold, but the possibilities nowadays are endless. Um, in terms of skills, of, so if we've successfully made that jump and we've got an account manager or a senior account exec that wants to follow suit, what sort of skills are you looking for for them to be a full-time creative in some capacity, Amy? That's, yeah, that's a really hard <laughs> question to ask. Um, it's very difficult because I think if it was someone, if it was someone within the agency that you're working in, that you know how they work and you know what they do, it'd be quite easy to help coach them towards that kind of role. If it was someone coming externally, I've absolutely no idea almost what, what kind of questions I'd ask them or what I'd, I'd almost need to see it. So it is very difficult. And I suppose that's something that we need to deal with. If I'm talking about within the agency, because we're having, you know, the team is, um, the way it's structured at the moment, I hope and glory it's quite small, um, that is gonna change in the future. Um, so that's something we're looking at. Um, and there are people that want to be part of that team. And I think a lot of it is just, it's one of those things that's been very wishy-washy in the past, hasn't it? Someone will just stand out, um, you know, you just seem the obvious person for it. That's the kind of thing mm. you get told. So from my perspective, I suppose someone who's extremely curious, and obviously all PRs are curious to some extent, but there are people that just have weird, interests or niches or you know I know that um <laughs> I've heard the discussion on brainstorms personally I really like a brainstorm I don't like how they used to be done when you're all herded into a room and you know there's a title on the board and you're all shouted out for ideas that's not a brainstorm but 
structured in various different ways, I think they're a really good way to get ideas out of people that maybe aren't used to giving them or aren't used to working in a creative way. Um, and I think it's really important to get ideas off lots and lots of different people and to try and make sure that we're getting diverse backgrounds into that. Yeah. But yeah. You know, for me, if I'm, if I'm, I try and make sure I get to know lots of, lots of the junior people at Hope and Glory. And if someone has a particular niche interest in like music and has unusual ideas in that space, I'll remember that and I'll come back to them or, you know, maybe it doesn't lead to ideas yet, but I can tell that they've started to see, to notice things in a different way or, you know, I don't know. That's the kind. I know it's kind. Of, again, it's it's not. It's not very clear. It, this is a problem. It's not very clear. What kind yeah, of, it's hard. Yeah. To, it's hard to talent spot in your own agency, I suppose, when people don't have the time to really attack a brief. So we do yeah. young lions teams, and some of them they come back with these incredible ideas, and you sort of say to them like, "Oh, do you think maybe you would want to be a creative?" And they're like, I "Don't know. Like, I don't know what the job is. Don't know if I've got time to do it." And I think there's also a lack of people knowing that that's an, av an available option to them. Definitely. Um, for me, it's a mix of three things. If I saw that someone was really curious and notices interesting things, that would spark my interest. If it's someone who does know how to land a story, because with the best will in the world, you know, and I know there's there will be ad people coming in, et cetera. If we're doing PR, most of our clients want editorial coverage. So it is, it is useful to have someone who understands how the news is today, because how it was last year is different to how it is today. So yeah. you need to keep your hand in that. Um, and then as a final, I suppose if it's somebody who is used to or, or understands how to take a brief and either question it or just, just answer the brief, <laughs> answer the brief how you think it really, what the client, you know, give, you can give the client what they really need or give them advice on what perhaps might work better. And um, there are some people that are really good at doing that who don't officially consider themselves creative, but it's a really useful skill to have. Mm. Jamie, what are you looking for in creative talent at all levels? Yeah, I'm nodding along with Amy quite a lot. I think um, the, the big thing for me, and I don't, I don't want this to sound really pretentious, but it's going to sound pretentious, is like a real understanding of like culture and mm -hmm. what's going on around and what's going on around people. Because if you have an interest in like a really niche interest in music or art or film or or whatever, your influences are going to be different from someone that doesn't. So when you're coming to attack a brief, their points of reference are going to be wildly different to someone that doesn't. So that, that's kind of what I look for. It's kind of, and I've, I've, like, I've interviewed people before and it's kind of like, one of the questions is what are you into? And if you go, what are you into? Then you understand where people's heads are at and you know they might have a bit more of a better kind of creative path. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know that sounds really, really wanky, sorry, but. No, 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 I, I would say that <laughs> completely. It is people that have an interest in culture and yeah, to your point, Amy, like a curiosity. Um, Megan, are you finding that people have got a clip like what kind of skills are agencies looking for in terms of the roles that they want to fill like are you getting briefs from agencies that are specifically looking for a design person when they say like an associate creative do they know what they mean um most of the roles I get in are on the idea side of things rather than um, I mean maybe a mix of ideas and strategy but rather than the kind of content copy all that side of things um most of the roles I've seen in PR agencies have been like the idea side um as I said before, I think I touched on this earlier, most of them want people who are already in PR and tested in a PR setting. Um, and most of them want people with creative in the title, which again is a really difficult one because you can have some really brilliant kind of juniors at kind of SE level who have really clear examples of, you know, great work they've done, but some places will still be reluctant unless they've got that creative bit in their title. Um, and I think the other thing that kind of gets stressed to me a lot and a lot of the, I know, but something we've spoken about for Ottilie is um, personality. So, um, mm -hmm. You know, obviously creative people have to be super confident because you need them to go into new business pictures a lot. Um, so they need to be likable, they need to be confident, but they don't, you don't necessarily want someone with a massive ego. So also someone who can accept criticism of the ideas. I think especially at the junior level, you know, they've got lots of ideas um, and they obviously think all their ideas are great, but it's also having that awareness that not every single one of your ideas is going to work. Um, and that's something we hear a lot from clients that have maybe interviewed quite a lot of creatives. I don't know if you guys have found that as well when you've been interviewing. Um, but yeah, definitely that experience in a PR setting is one that comes up a lot and is quite a difficult one when you're looking at those kind of junior and mid-levels. Mm -hmm. Fadi, you're a creative strategist, so we're talking about specialising to be a creative. You've specialised even further. Mm -hmm. what, what sort of skills do you need to be that side of things? 
It's kind of similar. I mean, I, I was actually nodding along a lot with Megan there. I think the ego point is massive. Um, mm. And I think, so just setting aside everything else, like perseverance, thick skin, and a lack of ego are like the things I'm looking for in a junior. And we are trying to sort of breed them. I was going to say breed them young, that sounds creepy. We're trying to sort of like, cook. we're trying to grow creative talent in H&K. We have this thing called the pool, which is runs across all nine sectors. MDs pick their best creative talent. And when a big eight, when a big brief drops, we sort of pick people from that pool and we sort of run it in a very structured way. No brainstorms, they're banned like a proper strategy, it's briefed in, they're given some thinking time and they do it in pairs. And we're really trying to sort of cultivate our own talent that way. And those, the things I'm looking for are those things because, and sort of not to be too sensitive because, I mean, sensitivity is a killer, especially when you're a young creative. Um, you, you just can't be sensitive. Or if like me, you are a sensitive soul, you've got to find a way to shelve it because you've got to get real comfortable real quick with her, everyone having an opinion on your ideas and sort of you've got to deal with clients who won't get it you've got mm. colleagues who think it's too risky or too safe and cds that are going to sort of try and bash it into the idea they had sort of two minutes after they heard the brief so you've got to really become comfortable with that um and if someone shows me those qualities and that they have style and i've taken flack on this in the past I don't think you can sort of buy style. I think you have it or you don't. I, lots of people have disagreed with me, but if I see those qualities matched up with some kind of style, I'm interested in there. sort of someone I'm, I want to sort of bring up. Yeah, no, I'd completely agree with you in terms of resilience. Um, Amy, I know I'm, I'm asking you this because I know you've got an opinion on it. Can you teach creative? Yes, <laughs> I really think you can. I think, you know, I'm not going to pretend that, that... <laughs> that absolutely everybody in the world is going to be brilliant at doing this job. I don't believe that's true. Um, and obviously there is, there, same as anything, there are going to be real talents, which is brilliant. But um, this, is why, this is why I like working where I do and the fact that there's a culture of everyone getting involved if they're interested, because I think, especially given how small the creative pool is in PR, we know how difficult it is to recruit. We know how difficult it is to get a group of people that aren't all the same person in a room if, if you're in my mind if you're shrinking it further by only taking creative from the two people in that agency with a title or the four people in our case what like how diverse are those ideas going to be and how much is that going to speak to all these many audiences we have to speak to so i just think you have to you have to make an effort to foster creativity in everybody or as many as you can because you're going to get the best out of that um mm -hmm. and i'm talking you know especially even things like there's a lot of talk about diversity in PR at the moment, but even things like socioeconomic backgrounds, you know, there's a real there's a real PR person that that still exists and is the kind of typical PR person that we will see more more of than than others in PR. And I just think having yeah having that diversity and trying to get as many different voices and backgrounds as you can is is the best for all of us. And it you know it is a case of just I think it's because it's been such a long time where creatives been considered like a mag mag magical unicorn skill that just this one kind of middle-aged white man is able to do um we've it's been kept away from people mm. by talking yeah. about it that way when in reality if you think about the fact that if you have that title especially obviously it gives you an opportunity to have the time to put to it like you said utterly um but really anybody if they're given if they're given a moment and some inspiration and the brief and you know, uh, some routes to go down, perhaps mm. you know, something, something to help them think along those lines if they're new to it. I think anyone can do a good job practice. Yeah. Yeah, can, I, can I just jump in for a second there? Because I think you said something that I really, um, really do agree with. And that, well, I don't think anyone can do it, but it's not sort of down to innate talent. I think it's a personality type thing. But something you did say is when you tell people they can do it, I've noticed like the massive effect that has on people. It sounds weird. But the second someone says you're a creative, you're a creative, and then they repeat it again and again and again. And I sort of nurture quite a lot of young creatives. And the more they hear it, the better their ideas become. It's some like really weird psychology um, because you just feel like such a fraud until someone else validates it. So I think yeah. that's actually a really important part when, it, when, when, when bringing up young talent, just tell them they're creative. 
um, because if they don't hear it, they're going to stop believing it, especially when the client starts to bat them over the head with their sort of feedback club. So yeah, yeah I just wanted to sort of really agree with that point, sort of telling people they can do it. I think yeah, I want to come back to this because I think it is a discussion to have in terms of is it a level playing field? What sort of skills do you need? But just quickly, Daisy, what have you found? Because you've come in with a bit of a design background and you've talked about doing a sideways shuffle to get sort of get into a creative role. What have you found people are asking you to upskilling quite quickly to be an all-round creative? Like, are you being asked to get to know the media um, and the news agenda to, to flex video skills? Like, what sort of skills are you being asked for? Yeah, I think definitely it was an adjustment to sort of try and get a good idea like a good understanding of what would land in earned media having never tried to sell anything in or worked from that side before you know really like tried to immerse myself when I first started in kind of every like headline that I could like you know it's like on campaign every day PR week every day just trying to like understand what would work but I agree with what Amy's saying that these are things that you can teach you know you I think probably it's not for everybody but they are kind of like skills that or like in natural interests you have that you can focus on and you can build out in people and as Fadi was saying it's kind of creative is kind of a scary job title because it's not just a job title it's also used to describe somebody you know you have a creative person mm -hmm. and that makes it sound sort of elusive and mysterious so the second that somebody calls you that or says you can do that you do have more faith in it I think yeah no, it's not the point also that I think when I say almost anyone, I suppose I'm talking about a pool of PR people who already have a certain amount of skills as well. They're already quite curious people. They're already probably mm. quite creative because they're selling every day. Yeah. So it, you know, it, I'm talking about from that pool of people rather than literally anybody in the world. Yeah. I suppose it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, isn't it? You tell somebody that they're good at a certain thing and they start believing it and growing in confidence, etc. cetera. Um, but back to sort of, the level playing field question so there are certain skills i think you have to have as a creative and one of the big ones is being very confident and comfortable presenting which i'm of the opinion comes from a certain background a certain education is it a level playing field in terms of the skills that you need to succeed in this job and sort of spoiler alert on what i think like how can we fix the fact that it's not jamie coming to you Bloody tough question, isn't it? It's I mean, it's it's not. It's I mean, it's I mean, I mean, there's been enough chat around it. It's not. It's not a level playing field at all. Um, how how do we fix it? And I, I think it's it has to come from the bottom, right? Like we need to be opening our doors to everyone and anyone to that has an interest in in the career. I think that mm -hmm. if you look at the way that a lot of traditionally like agencies have hired or like graduate schemes or anything like that. There's always the usual same path and you always get the usual same people. And that needs to come from the top of us, of us all going, right, actually let's think about a different way to approach how we hire or mm -hmm. how we have our intern systems or anything like that. It needs to be, it needs to complete rethink. Um, and I think, I think we talked about it earlier, but that's obviously gonna have a better effect on the work because you're getting more like open and different opinions on what we should be doing and what we should be addressing. It's a bit of a no brainer to be honest, but no one's really doing it. <laughs> yeah, and we were talking about, um, I think it was before this panel started, about having, even just having somebody that is a different age and giving their points of reference, like Daisy being a Gen Z, creates so much difference in the creative that you can put out. So yeah. having different perspectives is invaluable. Yeah, and it's, this, is, this is the thing. And I think, you know, we, we talked earlier about how the old structure used to be like the CD or ECD or whatever in like the ivory tower right that kind of mm. either judges the idea and says you are smart well done you or this is rubbish go back again start again or comes mm. up with the ideas themselves all of this stuff and stuff that is like in my opinion at least like utter gibberish because I think as, as a CD like and I, I have conversation like all the time with like the people around me I'm terrified of when I become absolutely irrelevant which will happen very soon like I'm yeah. 33 right which is I'm still holding on to being quite young but like doing like if some of the briefs we get in or like if, if it's like any sort of kind of some creative thought I'm going to be too old for that even if it's not from the brief it's from like how the platforms are working because that's not the life I lead like I'm going to have different life experience to some younger creatives so the emphasis should be put on those people that are coming through coming up with these ideas and it should be the CD's job and whoever their seniors are to kind of 
craft and shape it and pass on skills rather than try to clamp that down. But that yeah. it, it goes back to like, open the doors up, you get more people through and help them shape their thinking rather than the other way around. Yeah, and I would, I would sort of add to that, that I think there's a, there's a real lack of diversity in PR. And I almost think one of the reasons for that is because a lot of the campaigns that we make are for middle-class white people. So if people aren't seeing work that they find inspiring and they want to sort of go and make that sort of work, then why would they be attracted to agency life? Dude, and it's like, but it's, it's a whole thing, right? It's like, we make, like, who do we, we make work for people to talk about and read and share and, and all of that type of stuff that we all say. But at the same time, we make work just to win awards. Yeah. And it's like, there's a massive distinction on, what, on how we actually do and how we behave and what actually is, what we're actually meant to be doing. <laughs> yeah. Jumping in there as well, awards that are usually judged by a lot of middle-aged white men. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's an excellent point. Um, Fadi, anything to add? Uh, yeah, I've got I've got heaps to add, but which 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 parts will focus on? I'll touch on diversity. Um, a bit about me. I'm a Syrian man from the north of England, so you know, um, feel like I have a slightly different perspective to some people in um, the agency I work in, and I think it took me a really long time to realize that that was actually my superpower because the day I stopped work walking into rooms trying to hide sort of my otherness um, was the day that I actually found I had something to say and mm. for too long I feel like I was trying to imitate what I thought I should be and that doesn't really work for creativity uh, that has to come from quite this is my time to say something wanky that has to come from quite a truthful place um so agencies yes you should hire diverse folk but you've also got to let them be themselves so let's break the group think and sort of hire people to be themselves rather than kind of expect them to conform to this kind of standard mm -hmm. uh, i think h and k is getting pretty good at that um just a little plug um but uh yeah i think the industry as a whole has a long way to go with that mm. no i definitely agree in terms of we've got a long way to go um so if we're sort of hiring creatives at lots of different levels we're aiming to um be more diverse we're having lots of different perspectives i it's my opinion that that's had quite a big impact on the work that we're putting out um and we are really hustling we're making bigger bolder creative work we're winning more it can um do you feel that that's a direct result of hiring more junior creative talent um and where do you see that going in terms of how the industry will evolve with the evolution of this role that's a big question but jamie attacking it from you first dude twice with the heavy questions um Oh, blah, 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 blah. Right, let's break that down. Do I think that the bigger, bolder thinking work coming from PR is because of junior creatives? I mean, let's say yes, but I think I think it's more than just the fact that we're giving more emphasis into that role. I think that it's more the fact that PR, PR in its broadest sense, or and like including social and like any sort of earned media thing, is finally finding its voice a little bit. Like mm -hmm. if you if you think about any kind of like big advertising campaign, sometimes the success of that is judged on if it gets like coverage. And it's like, we've been doing that for donkey's years. That was actually, that was actually the whole point of us. Yeah. So I, I think it's, I think it's the actual thought that maybe, maybe that the, the lines are blurring a, a lot more. And in fact, that PRs, PRs are maybe just coming up with ideas that are intrinsically just more ideas that have different, like ways of being communicated through different channels rather than anything else. And that probably does come in part because there are more junior creatives thinking, but have we used this platform properly or have we thought about this differently rather than just the same old structure? Yeah. Does that make sense or was that a complete ramble? No, that made more sense than my question. So okay, well cool. done. Um, <laughs> anybody else want to attack that one? Else we're going to move on to tips and advice as a sort of parting shot. And then I'll go to the questions in there. Um, in the chat no that was a weird question um right so tips and advice um for creatives that are either maybe full-time um accounts people and wanting to make that switch that we talked about or are coming up through the ranks and are brand new to pr 
what would you tell them about being a creative, Amy? Um, uh, yeah, very, still very difficult. I think part, partly you have to, um, you know, I think sometimes people who want to do this job aren't particularly good at PRing themselves. And I count myself within that as well. I'm absolutely terrible at it. And I think that's what held me back for so long. Um, so although we don't want people with too much of an ego, unfortunately, if you don't have a bit of an ego about yourself, all the people with the egos will <laughs> smash you to bits. So you've got to have, it, it's kind of what we were saying earlier, you've got to fake it to make it to a certain extent. I think, you know, quietly having a word with um, an account handler when you've got an idea for their account and messaging them something that they can then later take credit for is not the way to go. You need to make it really clear that you are contributing and you're interested and you want to be part of it and you you know you're coming up with things and you're curious and you're sharing interesting stories or things that you've seen um and I think you know rightly or wrongly whether that is what should be what's needed I think that is what is needed um yeah. so I think you just have to before you've even had the conversation of look I think I would like a creative role or joining somewhere else to become a creative mm -hmm. you know, you've made it really really clear that you are someone who sees that in yourself and that you yeah. know it's contributing um to the wider agency so, so shout loud enough absolutely shout from the rooftops and make it extremely clear that it was you who was shouting yeah you can't be ignored um daisy tips for coming in at the junior end yeah i think that's i really agree with everything that amy just said actually i think that's all incredibly important um I would say it's so cheesy, but take every opportunity that comes to you, even if you can't see its benefit then and there, because you don't know how that experience will then come back to be beneficial in you know, a month or so, or a year or so, or even that person that you spoke to might then be helpful to talk to you in the future. Mm, the network. Always, yeah, but also to just have, have an open, sort of an open mind about things and not close yourself off to experiences just because it's not what you want to do which is hard in the moment, but <laughs> I think good in the long run. Yeah. And also kind of in line with what Amy was saying, um, when you're more junior and this is new to you and you don't necessarily, like I found this, I didn't have a background in PR. So I thought, oh God, I, you know, do my ideas have legs and earn media? And if someone more senior didn't like the idea, I would kind of drop it. And I think it's really important to sort of even if it's misplaced, have that faith in yourself that you actually think it could it could stand and kind of defend your ideas as much as possible without being without being overly defensive or anything, but just to have faith in yeah. what, what you think and your perspective. Self-belief, agree. That's um, wicked Barry. advice, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because creativity is so subjective, right? That's that's like that's the thing. It's it's just your opinion versus versus someone else's. To have belief in what you're what you're thinking. And believe in your idea, and even you like, and, ev and eventually you'll probably even build your own style of work. I think is it's such it's such an important point for a creative. Sorry, mm -hmm. just actually, that's really good Daisy. Sorry. <laughs> is that is that your tips and advice, Jamie? To interrupt people just because you think they made a good point. <laughs> um, yeah, I suppose. I I, I think I think the, the the ego thing is the ego thing is one point, but you've got mm -hmm. to be able to believe in what you're thinking. Yeah. Right? And you've and you've got to be able to take on feedback and, and all of that type of stuff. But especially when you're fighting for a role that might not even exist, you've really got to back yourself. And you might not be right the whole time, but you've really got to have that self-belief to push it forward. Yeah. Fadi, advice from you? Mm -hmm. Lots of really good advice already. I guess the thing I will add, and I can't believe I'm saying it, because I used to sort of roll my eyes hard when people said this to me when I was younger, because I'm going to sound 100 in a minute, but it felt like it was bad advice back then because things were sort of slightly less attainable but I think you should be making stuff like if you're not in a creative role and you're as far away from it as can be because like some people are very close the agency kind of knows they can do it and they have their champions others might have not even opened their mouth yet and they kind of want the role and they're not quite sure what they're sort of going to do they might not even be in an agency so I reckon <laughs> So now that the youths all have camera phones, um, now that everyone's sort of got access to this tech, you should be making stuff and showing people how creative you are. And like having, I, I was lucky enough to be a mentor at DNAD last year, like some of the self-initiated work I saw was just incredible. And, you know, like just to sort of draw like a parallel to 
advertising. Like I remember going into the agency Wiseman and Kennedy and the wall at the back, which was kind of all the weird stuff people had sent them to try and get mm. that Wiseman and Kennedy. Like the thing that always st sticks out, someone sent like the arm of the mannequin with, um, I think it was their portfolio kind of written, like their sort of CV written on it. And with the message, I would give my right arm to be. Oh, right. nice. Um, and like, I feel like you've got to kind of, you've got to sort of show people you want it. Yeah. Um, and I feel like that advice, I could be wrong, but I feel like that advice is a little bit better now because you're not excluding many I accept that not everyone will be able to act on it. Not everyone has time. Not everyone has the tech. But the yeah. barrier to entry is so low now that I feel like a lot more people could be acting on that. Mm, so go above and beyond. And then, Megan, coming from a privileged position of getting all of the feedback from agencies on what they're looking for, can you distill it for us? Yeah, so I guess I've got a few different points here. Stop me if I'm going on at all. But I guess, so if you're coming at it from, I mean, I don't do entry level recruitment. I should say that straight away. So I'm probably not much use for people that are looking for their very first step. But certainly at that kind of AE, SAE level, I think one of the most important things, if you're in a traditional PR role and you really want to get into creative, is actually have like a clear list of things that you can say, that was my idea. You know, really like shout about the stuff you've done and your part in it. Because quite often I get people that go, oh, I really want to be a creative. And you go, what have you worked on? Oh, well, my agency did this, my agency did this, the team did this. But actually it's like, what did you do? What is your part in that? What hmm. makes you the kind of really creative part of that team? Um, so that's my first thing kind of, you know, if it's on your CV, whether you create like a portfolio website, um, you know, put links in your CV, make it stand out on what you have actually done and what you've achieved. Um, I guess if you're already in a PR role, one of the things you can do is if your agency are not someone who has a creative team, like there's a lot of mid-sized agencies out there that literally have the one creative director still. Um, if you're kind of AM level and you feel like, like Jamie was saying earlier, you've done a lot of the PR stuff, but you also have those examples to share, go to your agency and ask if you can do um, a part share role. So you do like 30% creative, but get that creative title bit added into your title as well as the traditional kind of account manager because that will open so many doors for you to move into pure creative roles you know when I've got clients that are saying I will only look at people you know with the creative title unfortunately sometimes my hands are tied with that mm. um, and I can argue until I'm blue in the face but at the end of the day if that's what the client has said they want then that's kind of what I have to deliver so if you want to get into creative and you don't have that title, maybe just talk to your boss about, you know, maybe doing a, a split between that. You don't have to go into a full creative role straight away, but that can be a good kind of stepping stone. Um, Amazing. Can I really quickly build on something um, Megan said, because it's so yeah. important. Um, you mentioned that you should take the credit and I noticed that there's a big gender divide here. So having done a lot yeah. of quits, a man will take the credit for pretty much anything he was in the room for that's going to go in the book whereas a woman generally won't put stuff in like unless she was for cd you know and i noticed this time and time again whether it's kind of not when you sort of draw them into a conversation and you sort of get them to talk a little bit around other stuff they just like why isn't that in there and the mm -hmm. weirdest reasons when you're talking to a bloke that's not that isn't even yeah. you know just reflecting on my own sort of habit of taking all the credit like it doesn't even factor in and so to like my plea to sort of people I haven't seen sort of the makeup of people on this call but you know take take the credit like I'm not saying to the guys stop taking the credit I'm saying to the girls you know you, you, you're in the room you're a part of the process you need to be able to sort of talk about your role you on it yeah it. yeah yeah, I think I've ever agreed with anything more that anyone has said. <laughs> Hello, I can see your face. They're like, mm hmm. <laughs> um, right, so quick, very quickly, because we've only got four minutes left, um, but some questions from um, the group. So, advice on how we approach the creative process. Um, how do we take a brief um, through to ideas, Jamie? <laughs> how should we the creative process? I think it's different. Uh, for everyone we've had already two opinions on brainstorm versus going it alone and I think it's it's knowing what works for you and works for the brief so if everyone gets briefed at the same time feel free to the brainstorm feel free to go separately and you can always reconvene afterwards oh yeah nice that was very succinct Amy creative process yeah I'd agree I agree with that because it depends on the brief the brainstorm isn't always the right thing to do um, and I'd always recommend having some sort of 
especially if it's a sizable brief, having some sort of strategy in advance to give you somewhere to go with your ideas. Otherwise, they can be a bit like chucking paint at a wall, mm -hmm. a bit of research and work out who you're trying to talk to, etc. Yeah. And then what are your thoughts on being a good creative without the, the account handling experience? Do you think it's possible without um, an earned understanding you get from being an AEAM? I think that is an incredibly, you could almost have an entire panel about that question because I, I used to think you couldn't have it. When I was making the jump, one of my big arguments was, but I understand the media, I know what connects with media, I can come up with a creative campaign that will resonate, et cetera, et cetera. But having worked with some amazing creatives who don't have that background, I think as long as you can connect with an audience and create something that has got that, I'm really trying to stop myself saying the word talkability, but has got that shareability, then I think you, you are going to be a great creative and then you can learn all that other stuff. Um, would you agree, Daisy? I mean, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can definitely um, learn the media stuff as long as you've got like the creative flair. I think so. And I'd argue sometimes it's nice to have the objectivity as well um, that you're not, you know, if you've been working really closely with an account for ages and ages and you're like, trying to think of an idea that will work with it, you might be bogged down by what the client has said no to before or by other campaigns that have been out there. So sometimes it can be nice to have perhaps have someone who's got a slightly like less informed take. Mm -hmm. I would say and then final question oh we didn't get through them all I'm so sorry um somebody has asked if you're at a small corporate agency any advice on how to pivot into more creative agency I'm going to come to you Fadi as you've talked about that sideways shuffle hey yeah sideways shuffle take take the kind of some advice that I would just generally give, look at job descriptions, not titles, for all the reasons we talked about at the top, because titles are mostly made up. But, you know, actually sort of delve into what it is you'll be doing, because um, that's the only way you're gonna get to make the shuffle. You're gonna sort of, and it's gonna be a long, patient process, and you're gonna watch people in your peer group get promoted ahead of you in whatever industry they're working in, because you are taking sideways shuffles. But, do like the small part of the role that they will let you do that kind of matches with the next one that you want and then really talk that up. Um, and I went to loads of industry events. Like I got my break in agencies because I just kind of looked all the industry stuff and sort of had a lot to drink and then collared <laughs> all the people and said hi to me and eventually one of them did. Um, so yeah, you've got to try and get out there a little bit too. Amazing. And then I'll just very quickly answer this last question. So how does the job description for junior creative differ from a generic PR role? It's purely about having the time, I would say, to dedicate all of your day to cracking a creative brief. Whereas when you're an accounts person, you are um, doing sellbacks, you're selling in, you're getting coverage, you're um, doing send outs, a million and other a million and one other things that doesn't give you the breathing space to sort of just sit and think of ideas so it's possible obviously to do that dual role um and it's a good way as Megan mentioned to sort of build up your creative portfolio whilst if, if you're in a position where your agency won't sort of recognize a full-time creative role um but yeah it's about being your your whole reason for being there and your whole salary is dedicated to having ideas um or behaving creatively um, uh, amazing. Sorry that I missed the last couple, um, but thank you to the panel. Um, you've given us a lot of food for thought and been brilliant. Um, and thank you for everyone for tuning in um, and enjoy the rest of your evening. <laughs>